We're at the Barnhart Apartments uh, on uh, 6th Street and 11th Avenue. Now, in the early 1930s, uh, this was one of Calgary's newest and most luxurious apartment buildings. And I've often uh, wandered by uh, the Barnhart Apartments. There's no sign that I can see, um, but I've often wondered, like, this is a really very pretty building and it looks historic and I don't know anything about this place. So when I got digging last week, I found out some very cool things about Barnhart Apartments. And of course I found a literary connection. So inside the Barnhart Apartments, beautiful interior finishings, kitchens with the latest electric and gas fixtures, a vacuum steam heating system. I do not know what that is, but it sounds like a state of the art thing. And it was also home to um, the house, the apartment building was home to prominent Calgarians, uh, including one of the Lougheed's sons. It was also home to Mr. and Mrs. Francis Reeve. Now, we talked about Winifred Reeve's first Calgary chapter when we were at Royal Avenue and, and 7th Street. And now I'd like to talk about her second Calgary chapter, which begins at the Barnhart Apartments. To recap, 1924, Winifred leaves town and her husband, and she heads back to the United States. 1925, Frank is forced to sell their Beauview Ranch near Morley, and he switches lanes. He goes into the brokerage business, which was a pretty good call for Frank Reeve. Uh, and it put him on a track to becoming one of the richest men in Calgary. Now, this sudden turn of fortune sounds like it comes from the novel, but it's true. And there's more from uh, this story that sounds like it's made up, but it's all true. So fasten your seat belts. While Winifred is living in Hollywood, scratching out a living as a screenwriter, Frank is in Calgary, making a lot of money and having an affair with the young, pretty, well-connected Calgary widow, Mrs. Hill. Well, in 1931, Mrs. Hill convinces Frank to file for divorce and Frank heads off in his car for Reno, Nevada, Divorce City. While he's in Reno, he says, ah, oh, I'm going to make one last visit to see Winifred in Hollywood. And so he drives there and they reconcile. So August, 1931, the Calgary Herald reports, Mrs. Frances Reeve, known by her writings as Onoto Watana, and who has been residing in Hollywood, California for several years, is a visitor in Calgary. But Reeve wasn't just visiting, she was here to stay. She was 56 years old and in the middle of massive personal upheaval. The couple moved into the Barnhart Apartments in 1932. They lived here in 1933, maybe a little bit longer. I still have some digging to do in Henderson's directories. Winifred Reeve was clearly preoccupied with her personal life and she had a lot to do to repair her marriage. And she was also uh, intent on settling um, a score with her husband's lover, Mrs. Hill. And part of this she did on the page. She wrote two short stories about her husband's affair and her near divorce uh, from Frank. One was called Second Honeymoon uh, which was never published. And the other was called Because We Were Lonely, which was appeared in an American magazine called True Story in April, 1933. Now, Because We Were Lonely is a curious story um, because Winifred decided to write it from the point of view of the other woman. <laughs> so uh, you're reading um, the story and it's all about 
a fictionalized Mrs. Hill and why she set out to hook Frank Reeve, how she fell in love with him, and then how he changed the plan and decided to stay with his wife. And it's kind of a strange, it's a very strange story. So I want to just picture Winifred Reeve here at the Barnhart apart Apartments. There she is in this beautiful suite with all of her up state-of-the-art kitchen appliances and steam heating. Um, she was a two-finger typist, um, so you can just see her hunched over that Remington typewriter. Uh, she, according to her daughter, she used to wring her hands between scenes and talk to herself as she wrote. Um, so you can just sort of see that happening here at the Barnhart Apartments. The stories she wrote here offer a window into her life, of course, but they also give us an insight into Calgary in the late 1920s and early 1930s. Population just shy of 100,000. It was a small provincial city with, as Reeve describes it in one of the stories, it's clubs, social cliques, and organizations. This is us, the society, the society people, they played bridge together, they played mahjong, and of course they talked about each other. In 1920s, 30s Calgary, as Reeve described it, quote, everyone in the social world knew the affairs of everybody else. And if you departed from convention, you faced social ridicule and ostracization. This was a city that Reeve left in 1924 because she found it impossible to survive here as a professional writer. Um, and yet here she was in 1931, back in Calgary, for better or worse. She wrote out her revenge in those stories and she contemplated writing a novel called Boom City about a married woman in Calgary who is afraid her husband is seeing his mistress again. And this is, uh, you can find the notes for this novel um, in, um, at the University Special Collections, the Winifred Reeve Fawns. The story, uh, Winifred wrote, will coil around the fortunes and careers of several well-known people of this city. While all of the oil companies and the seething, electrical, feverish atmosphere of an oil boom will prevail. So in that unwritten novel, Boom City, her notes say, there would be a marriage breakdown and adultery, there would be internal strife among oil men, there would be dishonesty and graft involving the building of the Glenmore Dam in the early 1930s, and the catastrophic collapse of that dam. Now, wouldn't you have liked to have read that novel?